Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the very first video in the problem solving lectures of this entire DP playlist. In this video, we are going to be discussing the solution for the very first problem of the CSES problem set. And this problem is dice combinations. Now, before we even get started, this is exactly how your, you know, dynamic programming section of the CSES problem set should look like after this entire playlist. Not talking about these last three problems, elevator rights, counting tilings and counting numbers because these are based on some advanced concepts. But before that, all of these problems, they should have a green tick after this entire playlist. Okay. So with that said, let's get started with this very first problem. Okay. So let's read the problem statement clearly. Your task is to count the number of ways to construct some N by throwing a dice one or more times. Each throw produces an outcome between one and six. For example, if N is equal to three, there are four ways to construct this integer three. One way is to have one, one, one. Second way is to have one and two. Third way is to have two and one. And the fourth way is to just have three, right? So essentially there is no, uh, you know, limit on the number of times you can throw this dice, but ultimately you just want to find out the total number of ways to construct this integer n. All right. Finally, they've also said that uh, the constraints on n are from one to 10 to the power six. So n can go as high as 10 to the power six. And they also want us to print the answer by taking a modulo with 10 to the power nine plus seven. So let's see how can we solve this problem. We want to construct an integer n by rolling a dice, which can take the values from one to six. Okay. This value of n can go from one to 10 to the power six and the dice, which we have to roll can take the values from one to six. Okay. Now see again, come back to that same mindset that we were trying to develop in the very first video. We have a big problem. We will try to break that big problem into smaller sub problems which are relatively easier to solve than that bigger problem. And then we will come up with a relation between these smaller sub problems so that we can get the answer for the bigger sub problem. Let's suppose I ask you to construct a sum of K. Okay. Let's say this value of K is equal to 10. You want to find out in how many ways can you get a sum of 10? Okay. This is one problem. Let's suppose another problem here is that you want to construct a sum of K, which is equal to six. Think about it, which is relatively easier to solve constructing a sum of 10 and finding out the total number of ways or constructing a sum of six and finding out the total number of ways. Clearly, this is going to be much, much easier finding out the number of ways to construct six, right? Similarly, if let's suppose K was equal to two, then this would have been even more easier to find out the number of ways to construct a sum of two. So what we can see here is that the higher the value of K, the sum that you want to construct, the more difficult it is to solve it. You want to construct K. What are the different ways in which you can actually get a sum of K in just one throw, let's suppose. What you can do is you can divide this problem into six parts. You can get a sum of K from K minus one by making a throw of one. You can get a sum of K from K minus two by making a throw of two. You can get a sum of K from K minus three, K minus four, K minus five and K minus six. Yes or no? We can do this. What are we essentially doing here? K is a very big problem to solve. In order to solve K, we are just saying that we can get this value of K from so many cases, K minus one, K minus two, so on up till K minus six. Now think about it like this. Let's suppose the number of ways to get K minus one was A1. Number of ways to get K minus two was A2. Similarly, this is A3, A4, A5 and A6. Now, if I tell you that you have a value of K minus one. You want to get to K in just one throw. How many ways are that? They are just A1 ways because the number of ways you can get K minus one is A1 and then you'll make a throw of one, which will give you the sum of K. Got it. Similarly for K minus two, K minus three and so on up to K minus six. Now, since we know that K is a big problem and we've broken it down into smaller sub problems, which are K minus one, so on up till K minus six. Can we think of a state here? What is a state? A state is nothing but a sub problem in this entire problem. So we can define our state like this. DP of K is equal to number of ways to get a sum of K, right? This is our state. Again, it is very, very important to, you know, define the state clearly number of ways to get a sum of K starting from zero, obviously. And what is going to be your total, you know, number of ways for DP of K? It is nothing but the addition of all the ways of K minus one, K minus two, so on up till K minus six. So this was my state, the sub problem. My transition would look something like this. 
that in order to get dp of k you would be just adding up all the values for dp of k minus 1 up till k minus 6 dp of k minus i right now again think about that same thing what is that smallest sub problem for which you don't have to further divide it for which you already know the answer right see dp of k is the number of ways to get a sum of k so where do we actually start from we start from the sum of zero right and the number of ways to get a sum of zero is just one because you're not going to roll any dice so dp of zero is equal to one this is going to be my base case okay and finally what was that biggest problem that we were trying to solve in in the problem statement it is given to us that we have an integer n we want to find out the number of ways to construct this integer n so clearly if you look at your state how have you defined your state dp of k is equal to number of ways to get a sum of k so similarly if you want to get a sum of n then dp of n will define it right so dp of n is nothing but uh, number of ways to get sum of n right and this is going to be our final sub problem there is one more way in which you could think of the state right some people might think about the state in this way in which i'm going to be discussing let's suppose you already have a sum of k and you want to get to n you finally want to get to n okay so you could say that okay in how many ways can i go from k to n okay this could be also one way in which you could think so how can you get to n you could get to n by making by you know rolling the dice and getting some value added to your current sum so you currently have k when you make a you know uh, when you roll a dice for the first time what will you get you will get one two up till six so your sum is going to increase by that value so essentially by rolling a dice once you can get from k to this is another way in which you could think about the problem but here our state is going to have a different meaning here the state is going to have this meaning dp of k is equal to number of ways to get a sum of n starting from k this means that you already have a sum of k what are the number of ways in which you can get a sum of n finally right so this is another way in which you could define the state but understand it like this if this is your state will your transition be the same as this dp of k being equal to this no now you have a different transition formula because earlier you were trying to get to k but now you get going from k to n right so what I know is that you can get from k to n in these six ways, k plus one, k plus two, so on up till k plus six. So can I write dp of k is equal to sum of dp of k plus i, where i goes from one to six. Yes. See, here the transition was different, but now the transition that we have written is different. Okay, this is the power of the state. Unless and until you define what is the meaning of your state, the transition doesn't make sense. Thus, unless and until you define what is your bigger sub problem, the lower sub problems won't make sense. Got it? So this is the transition. Now think about the base case here. What is going to be the base case? What is that smallest problem that we don't want to solve? Clearly, if you want to go from K to N, and if you're already at N, you don't need to further roll the dice, correct? So the base case here, would be dp of n. What is dp of n here? The number of ways to go from n to n, which is just simply going to be equal to one. You don't have to roll the dice again. All right. What is going to be your final sub problem now? For getting the final sub problem, you must understand what is asked in the problem statement and what is your state? What is the definition of your state? So your definition of the state was this number of ways to go from k to n. So essentially you want to go from zero to n, right? Finally. So your final sub problem will be dp of zero. Number of ways to go from zero to n. Got it? Now see, we've discussed two ways to solve the same problem, but we never really discussed how do we code it iteratively or how do we code it recursively? How do we memoize all of these things? We never discussed it. Why? Because this is not important. What is important is that how do you break the bigger sub problem into smaller sub problems? Okay. Now the code is pretty easy actually. If you look at this thing, you want to find out dp of k it depends on dp of k minus 1 k minus 2 so on up till k minus 6 so it clearly means that if you already have the value of dp of k minus 1 k minus 2 so on up till k minus 6 you can get this value of dp of k minus i sorry you can get the value of dp of k right so do i really need to tell you how to code it no because you already know that pehle you will calculate dp of 1 2 so on up till 6 
only then can you get dp of 7 and so on right and similarly for this case if you look at it here you know that in order to get dp of k it depends on dp of k plus 1 k plus 2 so on up till k plus 6 so here it is the reverse you need to calculate first k plus 6 k plus 5 k plus 4 so on up till k plus 1 only then can you get k right so here i know that i will be you know in the first problem i will be running the for loop from something like this int i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to n i plus plus and i will calculate dp of i here dp of i will be dependent on the previous values of i so i know that they have already been calculated so i will get my answer but in this case i will be running my for loop from int i is equal to n minus 1 and it will it will go till 0 because here my dp of i is dependent on the further states okay so this is the very first code where we say that dp of i is equal to number of ways to make a sum of i okay this was the base case in order to make a sum of 0 we just have one way finally what are we doing for every single i we are trying to find out dp of i dp of i was equal to what dp of i minus 1 plus i minus 2 so on up till i minus 6 right so here i am iterating on all the states on which my current state is dependent dp of i is dependent on the previous states so i will just say that dp of i is equal to dp of i plus dp of i minus j where j is going from 1 to 6 right and i would only do it provided i is greater than or equal to j and finally we are taking the mod uh, this mod value is defined to be what is given in the problem statement fine this is the base case this is the transition step and this is the final sub problem okay and similarly here this was the second way in which we solved this problem dp of i is equal to number of ways to make a sum of n such that the current sum is i okay and here the base case is different base case is dp of n to go from n to n there is just one way and finally this is the transition step again dp of i is dependent on i plus 1 i plus 2 so on uh, up till i plus 6 and this is the final sub problem so this is the solution for this problem i hope you understood it uh, so yes i'll see you in the next video until then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to not miss any future updates on this series